seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, start. Since reaction power was first applied to flight, Aerojet General Corporation has led in rocket propulsion. The F-1 is no longer a drawing board dream. It exists. America's first space shuttle. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Defense contractor L3 Harris agreeing to buy rocket engine maker Aerojet Rocketdyne in an all-cash deal. Aerojet Rocketdyne being part of L3 Harris. Customer loves innovation, I love innovation, and the employees love innovation. When thinking about proven propulsion and the 80 years of experience that this company has, it's really quite incredible. My name is Camille Mendoza. I'm a program manager and I'm responsible for the DPA Title III expansion here at the Camden site. We produce 100,000 solid rocket motors every year from the size that can fit on your hand to the size of a large truck. With the DPA Title III investment, we are investing in Camden and expanding the site so that we can introduce automation and modernize our production processes so that we can meet the needs of our customer and the warfighter. What makes our SRMs advanced really is the innovation and technology we're bringing day in and day out. We've been investing millions of dollars into our facilities to provide more of them. We're really looking at what's going to allow us to be flexible going into the future and how do we set our teams up and our facilities up to be successful. So one of the unique things that we do here is everything is digital. We call this a digital factory. Everything is viewed on a tablet or a computer for a technician to fabricate the hardware that they work on. With everything that's going on in the world, there is a little bit more attention to propulsion in general. You can see around the world the climate is changing where some of our adversaries are willing to kind of test the waters a little bit. And us having the capability to respond to that with 100% success is vital. Anyone that fires one of our products needs it to work every time without a question. So hypersonics are the new threat and uh, we're actively developing solutions to that problem and testing new capabilities and new technologies in order to ensure that we're able to respond to that threat. So we're talking about aircraft that can fly across the Atlantic Ocean in a matter of 15, 20 minutes. The concept has been around for a long time, but we really took it from an academic concept and we're the ones who designed something that can actually be flown. And we've been flying these kinds of high-speed systems ever since. I'd like to think that we would never have to use any of our products, but uh, I know that we need them. And being able to have those capabilities and things that help just keep us safe at home is critical, I think. My name's Matt Bullivan. I'm the uh, RL-10 CX program chief engineer. I've been with L3 Harris for about 20 years now. RL-10 first flew in 1963, but we've been evolving the product since that time frame. It doesn't mean just because we have a legacy and have history that we're unable to innovate. Well, RL-10 has helped power payloads to every single planet in our solar system. It started out at 15,000 pounds of thrust. We're now at 24,000 pounds of thrust. I think ultimately RL-10 provides a known commodity. It's an extremely reliable engine while also being extremely high performing. You know, it's the highest performing upper stage engine that flies today. I'm Mark Aldaba and I'm a manufacturing engineer for the RS-25 engine. From the Apollo program to the space shuttle program and now the Artemis program, we continue to innovate and give the best technologies to power those missions. We have technology today that's helping us build RS-25 faster and more efficiently than ever before. We're making all different kinds of components that traditionally were made in, in ways that took so long to make and by using additive and using the technologies we have today, we've actually brought down costs quite a bit using additive manufacturing, about 30% so far. So additive manufacturing allows us to take that combustion chamber and make it, instead of being hundreds of parts, it's now five. It, it allows you to shrink the lead time and reduce your part count and having a low part count is, is hand in hand with reliability. 
and we're looking at a lot of other parts to see what other things we can use with the current technologies that are available so we can further reduce those costs and schedule. AEPS is a solar electric propulsion system that will get gateway from the Earth to the Moon. These engines are some of the most complex devices that can be manufactured, and the people that we have come together to deliver something that not only works well, but is extremely reliable. And then ultimately every engine that we build gets test fired here in our West Palm Beach facility on our test stand. It's inspected heavily after that before it goes off to the factory uh, to be joined with a vehicle. Out here at the test stand, we are getting ready to run a atmospheric upper stage engine hot fire test. So we're taking a production engine and we're running it through its operation just like it would in flight to get us some information to make sure that this engine's gonna operate perfectly once it's on the vehicle. Kyle Kreider, uh, been here for about eight years now, lead systems engineer, specifically in system development verification. And I worked a lot of testing for the RL10 engine. What we're gonna see today is an acceptance test. So you'll see a small spark, a really thin piece of thrust coming out, and then it's gonna ramp up to full power. And then we go through, check the performance um, from each of the individual points, shut down, and then we do it again. We relight to make sure that from one run to the next run, this engine repeats every single time. And after that, the test will be over. EDR ready? EDR ready. Engineer ready. Engineer ready. Talk to sequencer. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Start. Toronto. Looks good. That looks good. Leaks. Comes your close. Back to the side of the alarm on. The mission that L3 Harris has is to make sure that our customers, our civilian space customer, our defense customers are never let down. And the fact that you want to show up every day because you realize those people depend on you. Those missions depend on you. And that's why I come to work every day. When you are able to shake the hand of an astronaut and know that my work is going to help bring them back home to their families safe, it makes me want to do a better job, you know, and, and it's incredibly important that we give our 110% to make sure that our astronauts make it home. The United States pursuing exploration of the moon and Mars can only bring new insights that will help make life on Earth better. It's incredibly important, the work we do, and what we do here has such a such an impact across the globe. We need to keep innovating in our processes and make things more efficient, maintain a high level of quality so that we can continue to deliver products that everybody needs. We challenge ourselves every day to further enhance that technology because we know what's at stake and being fueled by innovation is also being excited by the technology that we bring forward. Thank you.